Welcome mercenaries, it's Osama. Welcome back to the syndicate. Today's video is gonna be a special video on a specialty item that we have in store for y'all today here in the briefing room. This is a specialty, specialty can. A real rare treat of a suppressor. One that has raised the bar and set the bar for numerous years. One that was created by a famous, famous engineer that worked at AAC, Advanced Armament Corporation, Mr. Ron Silvers. This here is his dream, dream suppressor. He always thought about this suppressor when he went to go run his big bore and everybody around would just cringe and just hate the concussion coming from this beast and just had to find a way how could he make it less miserable and more enjoyable for him and the shooters around him to shoot? So what we're going to be showing you today here in the briefing room is a legendary can. I know I said it twice, but I got to say it again. A legendary can. One, like I say, that has brought kind of back a revival over the last few years in suppressors for people who do have big board toys. So let's dive right into it. The can that we're talking about today is right here in this Pelican box. Right here in this Pelican, I am 2306. Plastic, comes in the plastic in the box. Have you ever seen a suppressor that came in a case this big? Have you even seen a suppressor come in a case like this, period? Well, you know what, hold that thought. Because this is the closest thing that's probably going to come with it. SKB case. Nothing's in it. But I will tell you what is in it. CGS suppressors cracking nine comes straight to you from the dealer in this SKB pace, or excuse me, SB, SKB case. Not many come in these type of sealed, dust-proof, crush-proof type cases. But back to the story. Now, for those of you who are veterans out here, probably already know what's in here. For a lot of the squids and newbies out here, they're probably clueless. But we're gonna kill the, the curiosity cat today. All right, in this nice Pelican Storm case, we have none other than the AAC Cyclops 50 BMG suppressor. And just to show you how huge this thing is before I take it out, I'm gonna do a quick comparison. Let's close that real quick. All right, now ready to go, here we go. I did have a real muzzle device or flash hider close to my proximity to where I was, so I grabbed the next best thing, which is identical in size, majority of times. Piston, Sonsico Osprey Octane uh, Series Piston. So this doesn't make a difference the size, I'm gonna tell you, because this is a 5, 7 eighths by 28, which is a 45 uh, right hand thread. But just look at that. Piston, usually your A2 bird cage flash hiders are about in this same size, you know, same size category, right? Now, check this out. What we have here is the mount. Get this baby out. Don't mind that. Bam! You see this huge thing? Look at this size comparison. Looks like child's play. This is your same about size as a Sonsico ASR brake, Griffin two port brake, and this is your muzzle brake for the Cyclops. Huge. Probably have to mill this thing out of a huge piece of billet steel 
looking small than a can a Campbell's condensed soup can. <laughs> For those of y'all who are old school like me and know the grown up with eating Campbell's chicken noodle soup, it's probably about the same size piece of billet steel that they had to mill this out of. Huge thing. If I had to say, probably about pound and a half if I had to guess in weight, maybe two pounds. This thing is stout, very stout. So with that being said, let's get back into it. So just to, that gave you a preview of what's in here. So AAC product manual for the Cyclops, Pelican, thank you for the purchase. I guess this was a joint effort with AAC and Pelican to give people a taste of the Pelican cases. Ammunition guidelines on shooting uh, Tyra and Evolution Series suppressors. If you know AAC, been uh, out of business for a while. Their Evolution was one of their first tier of pistol cans that came out started out with the 45, then went down to a 40, and then to a nine millimeter. And then that's where the Tyrant series came in to replace the Evolution series. Now, one of these days, I'll get all three because I have all three of the Evolution series, nine, 40, and 45. And I'll get into that, uh, why you don't see any 40 cans anymore. But nice, literature here but let's get into the marriage here so in this case since my brake is new and it did come with a brake you will put your muzzle brake right in here in this little hole right in here but don't worry about that let's get into this bad boy this is just like the tilt sit that down look at this look at this baby you see that this is a suppressor, ladies and gentlemen. The hell with what you've been seeing before. As Malik <laughs> from uh, Modern Pawn, you put your damn pinky in that bad boy. You see that? Pinky in there. Huge suppressor. In just in case, if you didn't see it earlier, I'll just lay them all out here. So, we have nine millimeter. 30 cal, about roughly the same size. This would probably be a little short if I put a direct thread mount in. Direct thread, Thunder Beast Arms Ultra 9, nine inch suppressor. And then here goes the big boy, right here. As you can see, I put both of these on here just to surpass that length. All right, this can right here, this can weighs about just under, just under five pounds. Uh, it has a Cerakote finish. It's made out of 4130 steel. So that also adds to the heft of the can. Um, this has AAC's Legacy Mount, which has this ratchet right here. So when you tighten down on the brake, it sounds like you're using a ratchet. And then when it locks in, the teeth will lock into the last tooth that it can engage in when you tighten it all the way. And if not, you just have to back it down to where it goes into the previous tooth, to the one that it can't necessarily engage with. And this baby's locked on rock solid. This can was designed for precision bolt guns, as in repeaters and single shots. This was not made for semi-auto use, but I have seen people run these on semi-auto, like before the 107 Barrett came out. I seen people run them on M82s and um, never had any problem, but those will void the warranty from Barrett if they, you know, I ain't gonna say catch you, but if you had to sit in there for work, they would know whose gun was being shot suppressed and whose wasn't. So, with that being said, suppression is the main key for this can. Like I say, um, Ron Silvers, the guy who designed this suppressor, always wanted to enjoy shooting his 50 cal on the range, 
But the people next to him were always just disappointed when he came out with that big hunk of a gun. Because they knew it was going to be concussive and loud. And it was going to try to, you know, distract them when they're making their shot. You know, you're thinking you're getting ready to pull your trigger and send one down range. And all of a sudden, a big boom! And it just knocks you off your game. And it just irritated people. And I want to say this can came out 2006, 2007. So that just tells you for year 2022 from 2007, we'll just use that. That's 15 years. 15 years ago, this big hunking beauty came out. There were other companies that came out like Ops Inc. who had a nice can. Um... Also, don't have it with me now, but will be soon enough. I have another 50 cal suppressor, which I'll be comparing these two. And they are more of the older, like this, so it's like in that same time frame. The other suppressor that I'm referring to is the AWC Turbodyne, which is a stainless steel suppressor. And later on, they end up coming out with a titanium version, which I wish I would have got, but I got the stainless steel for a hell of a deal. Also got this for a hell of a deal too, as these were uh, MSRP at $2,600, and that did not include a mount. So you say, rounded up ballpark figure, $2,800 with tax, $200 tax stamp, three grand, and we'll just say about $250 for your mount. Now this one here is in my Kdex trimmer thread pitch, which is a Canadian or metric thread pitch, which is one by 14. And I also have a Barrett thread pitch, which is the seven eighths. Uh, you know what? Seven eighths by 14 is the Barrett and one to 14 is this one here. So I had those mixed up. So, very, very, took me a long time to track down this KDEX thread pitch. Um, Barrett thread pitches were popular because everybody had a Barrett. KDEX didn't come out with the trimmer until about 2016, 2017, maybe. Um, changed the game. Uh, like I said, this was very hard to come by. And... The reason why they went to the 1 by 14 instead of the 7 8 by 14 was because of the shoulder on the barrel. This would actually lock into the shoulder a little bit better and obviously give you a better uh, clear aperture for when your pill goes through here that you wouldn't have a baffle strike or should I say a brake strike or whatnot. Or at least that's what the rep at KDEX told me because I actually tried to bypass and try to get a thread pitch uh, conversion to put on since it was so hard for me to find this because AAC bellied up long time ago and they stopped making parts but I ended up getting lucky and that since AAC is back in business now um, <clears throat> I think it's called Advanced Armament Company now still in Huntsville but if you really know AAC AAC started out here in Lawrenceville, Georgia so Piece of history there. Like I say, um, Ron Silver, when he developed this can, this was the cream of the crop for 50 cows. Cream of the crop. And I'm going to tell you why. This has been metered on the McMillan TAC 50 uh, bolt action rifle, the famous one that um, the Canadian sniper Rob Furlong shot at a mile and a half uh, kill. He was shooting. Uh, had a train of thought and it disappeared on me. But he also um, helped develop, not to say he helped develop this, but he's uh, helping develop uh, the Cadex trimmer rifle up there in St. Jean Richelieu, Canada. And like I said, with this can here, like I said, it was cream of the crop. Now, there are other cans now that have came out and 
haven't really heard them because not many people have some 50 suppressed. And like I said, this was the creme de la creme when it came out. So over time, I know uh, Surefire has a SOCOM 50. Uh, KG May, uh, Kyle and his guys over there, they have their own 50, which is about same size, half the weight out of titanium. And it has ports around the whole circumference of the diameter here. And you can control the blast, the muzzle blast from the 50. So take for example here, Sasako Omega, the, I forget, I can't, I have a train of thought and I lost it. But this anchor brake, what sounds are called, called anchor brake. So just think of this, but it has screws around it where you can control. So if I want to try to keep the muzzle down a little more tame, I can keep these ports open up here and close everything down here. So when the barrel, uh, not the barrel, but when the gun fires, it keeps the barrel down with the ports firing up, helps keep the muzzle from jumping and rising. So a lot of um, people have thought about trying to bring 50s back. A lot of people like to have a big 50, but uh, like I say, well, a lot of people is that concussive force when you shoot these big honking rifles. So Mr. Silvers really, really hit a home run with this one. Now, going back to what I was saying earlier, I think I remember the train of thought now. So with the suppression on this, it's very outstanding. This is now what I was going back to, my train of thought. So the McMillan Tac 50 was the rifle that Rob Furlong shot the mile and a half kill shot with. So with that rifle tested with this suppressor, the shooter's ear number, which is the most important number when it comes to choosing a suppressor, doesn't matter what's at the muzzle because that's going to be sending down range. We're worried about what's going on here behind the gun at the shooter's ear. This measures under the OSHA recommended uh, decibel reading for hearing loss uh, damage to start occurring at the 140 scale. This is just under that at 137 decibels at the ear. Great can, you know, for a 50 cal, for a 15 year old can, shooting hearing safe. It was a can of his, uh, it held his own at the time. And like I say, he did a really great job. I say these little serrations here, help you screw it on. These little dimples in here, I guess, just for design purposes. I don't think they mitigate much heat or anything. Also, with this can, which will be coming soon, Armageddon gear, who makes this suppressor cover here that I have on the Thunder Beast. Ultra 9, they make a suppressor cover for this and the AWC Turbodyne. Now the AWC Turbodyne is a little bit heavier than this can. And I forgot to say that this diameter on the can is two and a half inches. I wanna say with the AWC Turbodyne, it's a one and a half or a two inch diameter can in the 16 and a half inches, which is this here, is 15.8 inches. So pretty long size can, and I just can't wait to get it out and get some more footage. Um, have another shoot coming up in a few months, another suppression shoot, we're gonna have the meters out. And my guy, Bill, he measured his or his single shot. Um, I have a video shooting it, the Armalite AR-50, uh, with the Cyclops on it. And when he shot at the shooter's ear, it's about that 136, 137 decibel mark. So like I said, for Ken of this age and design, it was a icebreaker in the suppressor market. Like I say, it broke the mold for what they thought suppressor should be, especially in the big board caliber. And I never really wondered why and I know there's a plethora of reasons why. They never came out with a Gen 2 version of this. Or at least maybe in the new company that they have out now, maybe with demand or maybe seeing how the market has changed for big bore suppressors, but that they might try to come up with a Gen 2 or maybe come up with a whole new uh, 50 cal suppressor. And like I say, 
Comparing this to the AWC Turbo Dine, I've heard, this is no experience, but I've heard that with the Turbo Dine, it meters right at 141, 142 decibels at the ear, which I say isn't bad, but not hearing safe, where maybe the first two or three rounds might be okay, but after that, I put on ear protection, and I still would do that for this here too. Just because after a few rounds, this thing starts to heat up and the first round pop, you know, has taken all the oxygen out the can. And I would really say that it would have to be metered at the same place at the same time, you know, shooting on the same gun just to keep the test, you know, accurate. I would definitely like to put both of them together. Um, so like I said, with the AWC being maybe about right here and a little slimmer, um, now with the AWC's mounting system, AWC was kind enough to come up with a mounting system that's kind of like, if you're familiar with Bowers suppressors, their Verse um, series, like Bowers Verse 9, Bowers Verse 45, Bowers Verse 50. So they have like those Verse adapters to where you screw in like the um, Sponsor called Mega, how you can change out this ASR mount and put a direct thread mount on. You can screw out different thread pitches on here to mount different guns. So it comes with three. I want to say it comes with a regular Barrett thread pitch, the 7 8. It comes with, I can't remember offhand what 338 Lapua Magnum thread pitch is. I want to say that's like a three quarter by something, but don't quote me on that. But it's a real funky thread pitch. And then I think it comes with a regular 5 8 by 24 thread pitch, which will be with this Omega and the Ultra 9 R4. You know, your 30 cal, like 300 Win Mag, uh, 308, those type of caliber, 6.5 Creed more. You know, any of those 30 cal uh, thread pitches. So look at this size comparison. And I'm just telling you, this is a hell of a damn can. This is about 14 ounces, not including the cover. So maybe say about a pound with the mount anchor brake cover. Now with this Ultra 9, it being a direct thread, the, the uh, CB model is 11.9 ounces, but since this has the mounting in here, I would say this is about 13 ounces. So still, even though it's bigger than the Omega, since this is titanium, this is still gonna be lighter than the Stellite can. And like I said, this and the AWC Turbo Dine are both stainless steel cans. So it's gonna be pretty hefty, but in certain cases, some heavier stainless steel cans uh, do measure pretty well uh, in regards to the titanium, but the thing is that you're sacrificing, you know, having the lighter weight can and the extra barrel harmonics that come along with mounting a heavy can on the end of your barrel, you know, will also affect accuracy. But the thing with those big 50 cans, they're so big and thick, and I guess you know what like the size of like a gauge, if I had to call it, you know, like the wire gauge has a different thickness. So those 50 cal barrels are pretty stout. And they're more than likely not going to be any pencil barrels, you know, no small contour. We're going, to, we're talking about bull barrel contours or, you know, heavy Palmer type contours. We're not talking about nothing thin and flimsy. So, as I say, if your 50 goes down and you're in a fight, take this off. And now you got your billy club and you can beat the hell out of whoever trying to attack you. Because this thing will, as you can hear that, will knock somebody the hell out. <laughs> All right, mercenaries. I think that's it for the briefer room today. If you like the video and you want to see some more suppressor content, like, share, subscribe. Leave some comments down there in the comment section because I do check them and I try to respond to everybody especially people who have an interesting comment or a question or anything like that. You know, we don't have to try to, you know, point fingers at anybody. 
or try to embarrass anybody. You know, this is a learning channel, so, you know, nobody's better than anybody else. So, all right, mercenaries, stay safe, stay legal, stay informed, stay dangerous, stay ahead of the game. Osama, out.